I'm in the full screen. We need to be here. Hello, everybody. We have a tank to weather today. Are you all excited to finish this beautiful, beautiful machine? Because I am. I'm actually very excited to finish this tank up today. That is my hope, plan, and desire. Um, it's definitely getting done today because this little video is going to be coming out this Friday, hopefully, which I'm very looking forward to. All right, hello to Glenn, by the way, in chat. I see that there are quite a few of you already in chat and watching. Hello, everybody. I wanted to talk a little bit first about what I've done. Because I did do one small thing in between sessions, um, even though I claimed that I was going to do a lot more in between sessions. So what I have done is I've gone back in, and let me just make sure this, this is focusing on the tank better. And I have null oiled all of the treads because I wanted them to be a little bit darker and stand out a smidge more from the actual rest of the coloring of the tank because even though I know historically they are all very mono color, it was bothering me <laughs> on just an aesthetic level. So I, um, I decided to go back in with some Nolan Oil. I actually really like the way that it looks. It's very subtle. Um, but I do think you can still tell the difference between the colors and everything, which I enjoy a lot. Um, and then I did a little bit of Nolan Oil actually on the machine guns as well. Um, or these, these smaller guns. I think they're machine guns. Um, because again, I wanted them to look a little bit darker and a little bit more worn. And I figured the Nolan Oil could end up being just either oil or soot or just grime that has built up from them being machines that are used or like going through things so i think it's a good start to our weathering but we're actually gonna get some weathering done today are you guys excited because i am um all right <laughs> got really aggressive there the two ones that i want to start with of my tamiya weathering powders because we're going to predominantly be working with some weathering powders first and then once we've got all the weathering powder on then we're going to come in and we're going to use some of this Splatter Effects Dirt from AK, which I have never used before, but I'm really excited. I was reading the um, slightly oddly worded instructions on the side, and I'm excited that this can actually be re-wetted and you can move things around. So if I really hate what I do with the dirt, I can possibly salvage it without having to like cry about it too much, and I'm, I'm glad for that. So I think we're going to start with the... I think I actually want to start with the 
oil stain because I feel like the oil staining would be beneath. Like the opposite oh. of what big wireless Sorry, my music is deciding to play an ad for some reason. There we go. All right, fixed it, passed that, we're good. All right, so yeah, I think we're gonna start with the oil stain first and then we will work on the soot. I really like using I've used soot a lot on like all of my projects that I've done any weathering on. Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna go ahead and get started. I am gonna take a sip of my caffeine. It's been a little bit of an early morning and then kind of like not early because I then took, I went back to bed basically after I got up super early and I think it threw me off a little bit with tiredness. Hello, Dazran. Also, hello, Charlie. Oh yeah, we're gonna go, we're gonna go bonkers with the weathering powders. I, I really like working with weathering powders. I think they're very fun. I even brought some additional brushes in that we can like jack up. Um, and I've got a whole actually like container off to the side of brushes that are kind of just meant for, do you have something that is meant to be abusive to your brush and you don't want to use one of your fancy nice ones for this task? Cool, let's do that. Hello, Havman, thank you. Ah, oh, very nice. Well, enjoy your week off. Should be fun. It's always nice having some extra time off from work. You can catch up on relaxation and everything. Ah, Partworks, you went to a convention last weekend. Nice, I'm glad it was fun. Oh, were you at Nova? Or were you? did you go to something else? Because I think I remember you mentioning it, but now I can't remember specifically what con you were going to. Or perhaps I remember something else. I don't know. I get a lot of messages from a lot of people, so I sometimes, like, cross who's doing what. I do apologize for that. We're gonna... Actually, I apparently haven't used these colors at all much. I've, I've dabbed into the blue, apparently, a smidge, but not with this particular brush, because it is perfectly clean, which means that I can mess it up <clears throat> with this oil which I'm going to be interesting how like cause yeah it is oilier fascinating okay so I'm thinking the oil predominantly should probably be on the treads like the wheel areas um, maybe on some of the guns basically anything that might rotate or move because you'd want to keep those lubricated so that they continue to function Oh, the, the music is a tad loud? Okay. Oh, that's right, because we adjusted it for the, um... There we go. How's that? Also, let me see if it... Is that better? Let me know if that is better for you guys, music-wise. I turned it down a little bit. I think I had it adjusted still from the last, um when we were having to listen to, to GW. Ah, you logged in under a weird account. Oh, am I? Oh, is that why? Yeah, let me fix that. Oh, okay, and sorry. I'm like, why are you getting ads? And I'm like, oh, because you're logged in under um, a Tolly. Oh, well, how did I get logged in under a Tolly on? Okay, just, are you? Weird. Hello, Chipster. Welcome to the stream, sir. All right, we're adjusting because I was logged in in a weird account. And that's why we were getting ads. Because I was wondering that too. I was like, why am I getting account? Or uh, what's the name of the playlist? Uh, it's it's by Becky Lynch. Uh, it's no, it's 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 like multiple Y's there. I think... Ah, I see. Yeah. Uh, it's that one. It's the two-hour retro wave synth wave. It's just one of the ones that I've There's seen. multiple of them. Okay, well, the pink and purple one. I'm going with the green. Okay. It's painful. Okay, fine. Then why did you bother asking me? Because I wanted to pick the opposite. <laughs> oh, okay. Does it play? Yes. It says it's playing. It is playing. Okay. I, I hear it. Hopefully they hear it, too. All right, we're doing some weathering, folks. We're putting some grease on these treads, and I like it immediately. I'm mostly trying to treat this kind of like I did when I was dry brushing of where I'm getting it 
at an angle so that I'm only hitting it from certain areas so that we don't overwhelm the thing, but so that we get this powder everywhere. I'm really liking the effect. Thankfully, this stuff lasts for... Like, I, I have found, at least, that the Tommy powders are very uh, long-lasting on the brush, so I can just keep going and sort of spreading this around. And we're just going to gradually build all of these colors up. Welcome to the stream, sir. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you, Chipster. I'm very happy with how this tank's coming out so far. And honestly, I've been looking forward to this part. I've been wanting to do the weathering for a while. I've been a little nervous about it, I admit, but I'm also very much looking forward to it. Getting a little bit on just the underside of everything. Imagine there'd be some splatter. Wayne, I am doing great today. Thank you for asking. Hope you're doing wonderful. We're gonna have some fun weathering my little tank. And we're starting with our Tamiya powder oil stain. themselves. Have you never used the powders before? I really like them. Like, I've only started using them recently. Um, I think one of the main things that I used them on that would have been on the channel would have been when I painted and weathered the Chaos Knight. And I really fell in love with them. Because I just think it really emphasized what I had already done on the model, honestly. It was just, it was really great. And because you can, like, honestly, because I feel like you can kind of build them up very, very gradually in the same way that you could really gradually build up dry brushing, there's a lot of forgiveness that I think the powders have. Oh, I'm definitely going to be putting some mud on it. We've got our dirt. So don't worry, we're gonna get some mud on there. But first, we gotta powder everything. 
get everything sooty and grimy. And then we're going to get a couple of things rusty. Uh, maybe a couple of things like chipped, like they've got some a uh, little bit of paint wear, for example. But we're not going to go too hard. I don't want it to look. I don't want it to look so aged that it is a rust bucket and it's not looking like it's being in use. I want it to look like it is a in use tank that is being well maintained, but is still war worn. Basically, that's that's my goal. Having never been in a war, we'll see how accurate my war wornness makes it feel. But um, I'm hoping <laughs> that's my plan. Um, with the, are you asking about the powders if you have to water them down once you put them down? No, you can water the dirt down once you put it down to reactivate it if you want to move it around, which I really like. Um, I, I assume you could probably wet the powders to maybe lift them back off or smooth them out perhaps, but I've not tried that specifically and... I haven't really thought of, like, I can't think right now off the top of my head of an instance where, like, I'd want to specifically add water to dilute the product for a different effect. Mostly because of, like, their powders, they're meant to be a dry material, like, medium. Nope, Richard, we're not going to be using Dirty Down Rust. I'm not actually sure I've seen that available in my area. I mean, it probably has been. I just haven't looked specifically. But um, we're just going to be using the Tamiya powders and then some AK Dirt. First idea, in war, it's really hard to find a drive through tank wash. Yeah, I'm sure it probably is. I'm not really sure cleaning the tank um, to that level is, like, for parade readiness is necessarily a top priority for a soldier in war. That's kind of the idea. It's going from assembly line to out on the field. Exactly. It's a good way to look at it, Chipster. Pretty much I'm just going to go at it until I feel like it looks cool enough. Also, yes, John, uh, sorry, I didn't see your question earlier. You asked, is the weathering the painting part or is it adding the dirt and powders? And the weathering would be more adding the dirt and powders, typically. There are some weathering techniques that are done with paints, though. So you can technically do both. Like, and you can qualify, like, you... Weathering is making it look aged basically like i would more describe the weathering process simply because there are a lot of different materials that you can use to weather a tank or any other miniature that the weathering process is more an aging process to make the model look more worn and used or rusted or whatever you know like however age you want to make it but it's to make it look that way rather than it looking 
purely pristine, crisp, and like brightly colored, for example. And the reason I say that is because like, you hear how liquid that is? Like this is a paint. Giving the undersides of some of these, like, sticky-outy bits. And then we're going to hit the hole a little bit on the edges near the wheels. And then the back sides of the wheels, obviously. I should probably take, <clears throat> sorry, my voice like cracked there. Uh, I should probably take that off so that I don't accidentally scratch it and damage it. Oh, Chipster, that's awesome. I've never tried a marbled effect on my bases before. That sounds really cool to try. Hello, Bob, welcome to the stream. Oh, I don't know if I want to chip it that way. I, I've, I've, October, I've, I've seen that style. I don't know if I'm ready for that quite yet. I have some other ways that I'm going to do a little bit of a chipping effect. Don't worry. But I don't think I'm going to take my, uh, my razor to it. All right. I am very loving the way that this is turning out so far. Oh, I knew I was gonna- I knew I was gonna enjoy the weathering process of this. I always like the weathering process of any model. It reminds me of the basing process. I don't know, there's just a certain freedom to do what you want when you're weathering. I mean, not that you can't do that when you're painting. I know that's kind of weird, but like... I don't know, it's just slightly different. there and then I want to put some grease on here start getting that to be a little less shiny because good lord it was real shiny there we go I feel like that immediately looks better it's still pretty darn shiny though hold on hold on we can we can do better we can improve we can make him stronger All right, yeah, yeah, that is proper dirt. <laughs> okay, happy with that. Let's get a little bit of, a little bit of grease on some of these other places. Okay, I think I'm gonna do a little inspection of it. I think I'm feeling good about where we're looking grease-wise. I do want to put some. Here, actually. Oop, shit. Ah, uh, my one... Okay, so, like, I love the Tommy weathering powders, but I have one complaint about these, um... relatively inexpensive little tools that they send with us, and I get it. They're cheap little tools, so it shouldn't last forever, but good lord, this side likes to pop out of, like, the beveling so easily after just one session of just rubbing it into the powders and then it's just destroyed and it bothers me i need to just go buy a bunch of like cheap makeup ones so that i can just use them and just keep disposing of them but oh my god talk about a minor annoyance
Okay. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and move on to our soot. And then we'll start playing with some brighter colors. It is a makeup brush. Like these are, oh, see, like for example, this one has lost its. So let's go back to our slightly destroyed one. Actually, this is the soot. Let me use a brush brush. doing what I want it to. Very gently. Alright, do I want... Okay, let me try... I want to try it with the makeup brush, because I think that's going to work better. Yeah, no, I need it to do on, be on the makeup brush. So with the soot, I actually want to keep it relatively controlled. We're going to focus around the engine portion, which I think makes sense, especially near the exhaust. bunch of the con swabs actually hold on let me check that out two heads i forgot i had these yes these will work nicely i have a couple different sizes and styles so i'm gonna work with the i think pointier one first however i do still want to work with this for this the just getting a little bit more on here bottom. Okay, yeah, and I actually want to get some soot, like, more underneath the wheels, so I am going to use this to do that and get in between. Actually, I might go back with the grease. So, yeah, I'm going to go back to the grease with this. Oop, let's not stick the same side. Yeah, I really like the grease color tone, actually. It's a really... It's a really nice sort of dark gray. Should definitely get some soot on the edge. On the edge of our gun. Let me just oh 
nope, hold on. I want to make sure it's on focus. There we go. I don't know if you guys saw it, but there was a little plume of, like, smoke coming off, and it just made me go, like, pew! <laughs> like, it actually had fired. I know it would make a much larger noise than that, but this is a tiny version of the gun, so it goes pew. I don't want to make it too heavy, but I do think some soot would end up getting blown back onto, like, front of the vehicle like on these edges so we're just gonna dust it slightly I think this is looking really nice. Subtle, clean. What do you guys look think? I guess I shouldn't say clean. It's definitely not clean. Focus. I would definitely recommend a chipster. They're very fun to work with. Work with. Ugh. Words. Alright, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and I want to do the same kind of effect around this gun here. Also on these extra threads that are on the front to make them a little darker. All right. Dabbing some soot around a little bit just because I want to soften a little bit of the shininess from the wash. Like that blue wash, while not actually a gloss finish, did have a little bit of a sheen to it when it dried. That's why you see a little bit of reflection whenever I like rotate it in the camera. So I'm just softening that a little bit. Is this brown that's next oh that's the rust okay um since we're not going to be having rust in a huge number of areas let's go ahead and do rust next do i have any brushes that i've used the rust on already oh that one's definitely probably the one that broke okie dokie that's fine i'm gonna go back to this Maybe I will use the, but I want to use the littler one. Big bang and less of a boom. That makes sense. I assumed it just wasn't a pew pew noise. All right. We've got our rust sort of built up. Bigger. Okay, we're just gonna have to go with this. I'm 
There we go. That's doing more what I wanted. I'm actually going to bring in some of that brighter rust too, because this is darker. Do I have another one? I feel like this is actually darker than where I remember my rust being. Aha! Here it is. Okay, I was like, no, I have a brighter rust. And that's also apparently where all of my tops also went. There, see? We're going to use this rust. This is the rust that I was looking for. Like, that darker brown is fine, but not... Like, I want it to be a bit more standout. There we go. That. That is what I'm looking for. Zip. There we go. Now we're focused. There we go. Later, Chipser. See ya the next time. else maybe would we possibly see rust? I know it would be focused down here on the exhaust and where the engine is. But is there anywhere else on the tank, like maybe the bottom, like on this edge? Because it's harder to maintain. They're not really lifting the however many tons of metal this is. Let me know before we move on to the next one. In the meantime, I'm gonna take a sip of my drink. Also, Scotty B, potentially we might do an, an airplane next, but I definitely am leaning towards, I'm not gonna lie, I like tanks a lot. So I've been leaning towards the Sherman. I also picked that up already. So we'll, we'll find out. The treads, so there should be some rusting on the treads. It's gonna be dirt. It's gonna be pretty pretty standard, just diorama dirt. So whatever, that's where my, my tank is gonna be. Cause this is what we're gonna be using for the dirt later. But treads are what I'm hearing, seeing say is um, some other portions where there might be some rust. Well, let's go ahead and take the, this portion of my little tool here. And we're just gonna dab a smidge on. I don't wanna, I don't want to look super Super rusty, but we can definitely make it look a smidge. Some delicate taps. So let me get a bit more powder. I don't want to get too heavy, like, but we don't want this to be overwhelming. Again, I don't want the, the tank to look like it's a complete rust bucket. But I do want it to look like it's got some age.
Okay. All right, I think what we're going to do next before we do any more with the rest, because I want to come back in and do a little bit more, but I also wanted to get a little bit of my chipping effect on here. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to be using a little bit of some of these metallics that we have here. And I think I'm going to start with the titanium. Actually, no, I'm going to do the gunmetal. Because if we're gonna have rust, we should also Ooh, that that did nothing to my that just destroyed my brush. It's fine. Everything's fine. Ooh, sorry, I bumped the camera. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. They're getting a little metallic. I can't actually tell. <laughs> All right, there we go. We'll use this one. I actually really like, I really like this tool for applying these powders. I just feel like it gets me the best results. have that on there. Let's come back in with a little bit of the rest. Which I think I just dragged my nail across. Yep! I mean, the paint. It's been sticking fine. I haven't really had any problems yet. For subscribing, Snickers Cleveland. Hope you enjoy your time on the channel. The lower glacious plates. Is that these here? Because of all like the like the, the bottom surface, you mean? Because I could see them having a bunch of like and stuff because of hitting rocks and getting them flung up into the the underside
Silicon molding tools, huh? Interesting. I've never tried that before. Alright, let's get a little bit more of our gunmetal. I'm getting a little bit onto the box. Alright, I'm going to switch back over to my rust. Actually, no, before I do that, let's go with a slightly lighter... Now I want to use the titanium. I just want a little bit of a warmer metallic pop. Something a bit brighter so it stands out. There we go. I am liking that a lot. It's blowing away some of the excess powder. Why are you saying no to me in such a way, Richard? Because I'm not using silicon tools, is that why? <laughs> I think we'd also see a little bit of metallic here on the wheels. Because I'm grinding against the treads, which are also metal. I would imagine would cause some wear. Some chipping of the paint, perhaps. I've never uh, built a talk home one, so right now I would say that I'm very biased towards Tamiya. the rust now. Actually. Okay.
Oh, what model do you think I would like two heads? Thanks, Scotty. Appreciate it. Okay, that's cool. That sounds awesome. I've looked at some of the, like, otter vehicles that I'm less familiar with from War, like, at, in the, the kits that I've been seeing at Hobbies Unlimited. And there are some, like, fancy-looking things. There's also some just weird-looking gun things. I don't even know if they're actually, like... I think they had guns on them, at least. But they did kind of... There was one that kind of looked like a tractor. I wonder if that's what you're thinking of. Okay. I'm feeling... I'm feeling pretty good about the weathering on this. Let me... I'm gonna bring it a little closer. So, let me know what you guys think. I've got some weathering done on the front that adds some rust. And it then goes down into the bottom. Which I've kind of tried to focus it along where the, like, connection points would be, where all the rivets are. Because that's where I imagine, like, dirt and grime and moisture would get trapped. So that was sort of my idea there. And then brought it back over. Let me flip it this way. To the back. And then we kind of focused it on... The engine and the exhaust where most moisture and heat would accumulate. The Waz Technia's CSP Clara. Okay. What is a swim wagon? Is that a wagon that can swim? Is a D9 tractor an actual tractor, or is it like, is it a specific type of tractor? Like, is it a far- sorry, by what I mean by actual tractor, that sounds so weird. Um, is like, is it a farm tractor, or is it a military tractor? And if it's a military tractor, what's it used for? Because I'm not familiar with that. The whole tub would be rusted, not just the ends? Okay, I can add a little bit more. I don't want to go too crazy because I don't want to like completely overwhelm it, but I can definitely enhance that. There, how's that? Is that better? Also, I'm going to make this a bit rusted because it's next to it. So I assume they would probably get a little bit of um, moisture collection there, too. All right. There we go. We enhanced it. Again, I don't want it to be fully worn out. Like, I assume it's going to take it time for it to be fully rusted. Ah, it's more like a bulldozer. No problem, WL Fetch. You haven't missed too much. We have just been working on weathering my little tank. And as you can see, we have done some decent work. We have used some grease and some soot. And we've put some metallics on there. And then, of course, some rust. And I'm very happy with how we're looking. I think we're going to start moving on to adding the actual dirt. Because these treads... While they look good and they look worn, they don't look dirty enough. They're still far, far too clean. 
Ooh, what's a hankle? Oh, it's a big armored bulldozer. That's really cool. Oh, caterpillars are what dig trenches and like make roads. Okay. That's really cool. I did not know that. I'll have to look that up. Um, all right. I am. I'm going to take a slight break. Um, we are nearing noon. I want to check on the kitties. I did feed them this time before the stream to make sure that they were, were pretty decent, but I want to go check on them, make sure they're asleep still and everything, that they're good to go. And I'll be right back and we'll probably, we'll either, we'll either continue weathering a little bit more or we'll move on to our texture paint with the dirt because I'm really excited about that. Also, I don't know if I should do any other, like, should there be any rust on this? When I get back, let me know if there should be any rust anywhere on any of the features up here, just because of, like, proximity to where, you know, they are comparison to the engine and all that. I feel like they'd be the least rusty areas. Why are you not going in? What's happening? There we go. Um, but, like, the gun end does go towards it, so maybe I need to emphasize it a little bit. I don't really know. Let me know when I get back, but I'm going to take a short, like, five to ten minute break. I'll be right back.
I have returned and I will I have taken a picture of my cat because look at him he is a cute boy in a box and I didn't want to disturb him and try to like bring him in here to show you physically so I was like I'm just gonna take a picture of him anyways I hope you enjoyed that and uh, he's adorable I have an adorable cat okay so you're saying that one this should still have more rust on it. I, I hear you. Okay, we'll we'll build up some we'll build up some more stuff then. We'll also put some more soot on there. We we'll just we want to build up more soot, more rust, more soot. And then we'll get to dirt. All right, I like how that has happened. Now let's get. Some more rest. Even more rust. If he sits, he does, in fact, fit. Or if he fits, then he does, in fact, sit. Uh, no, I specifically knew he would get into that box. I was like, oh, this is the perfect side for him, size for him to squeeze himself into very comfortably, but also look squished in. Um, and I was correct. I, I knew he'd like it. But I do want to darken the tip. Because that's where all the gunk comes out. Build up the soot. All right. I like that.
think we need to soot up uh, some more of these things, though, it occurs to me, because they're right next to the exhaust, and while I don't necessarily think they might rust specifically, they should definitely be sootier. Feeling good about that. I think that is where we're going to stop with our powders. <laughs> they can take the shape of any container that they uh, sit into. You're absolutely right. Because they are, in fact, just liquid. Okay. I'm loving the little tank. I've never used this before. I'm very scared. First, I need to Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna start on the bottom. I don't know what this is gonna do. I am gonna put a little bit of water into my brush. Because the instructions do say you can, like, wet it and dilute the stuff. And actually, let's do, let's actually do, before we do anything on the tank, let's grab our, one of our sample, is this the correct one? No, this is the one. I mean, it doesn't actually matter, but let's actually just do a little bit of testing. Also, I want to dab it onto the palette. What does this do? Interesting. Okay. Ooh. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm way less worried now that I've done my minor little test, but this is, this is gonna be great. I'm excited, okay. We'll see how that dries, but um, I'm immediately thrilled by this. Let's, I want to get some out, but I don't wanna get, I don't wanna leave it open. So I don't want it to start to dry out. We're just going to have to keep coming back to it. Now, I want to make sure I get it sealed correctly so that it... There we go. Okay. Try to prolong the life of this product as much as possible. We're gonna build this up, and but we're gonna kind of do it slowly because I don't want to completely lose everything that I've done with my powders. Oh, but I am really liking how this is looking already. I was slightly off camera so much when I turned it.
Mud all of the chassis of the tank behind the track wheels. Because that would be the dirtiest part. So like this, this part back here. Like that stuff. And that makes sense. Oh, let me open my dirt again. Evening, Matthew. Welcome to the stream. Lovely to have you here. We're working on dirtying up my tank. With some splatter effects dirt from AK. Okay, you guys keep using very specific terms on the tank, but you have to remember I don't know all of the specific terms for all of the parts of a tank. So when you say, like, like the glacis, for example, I don't know what that means. <laughs> like this big portion of the center is like the hole is that the chassis as well as that just another name for the hole or are those two different things wherever i can't get the brush would be filthy that makes sense bobbins question that may be a little ignorant but I'm not sure. Do these these wheels on the tank in real life are they spinning or are they stationary and the treads are just spinning around them? Because that's what I thought it was but I want to make sure. They spin? They spin? Okay. The glacius is the front plate so so like this whole this whole section Okay, they are spinning. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. Got it. Well, then they're gonna get mud all the way around, then. I am 
not making a diorama with it, at least not at this time. Right now I just wanted to attempt painting my first scale model because I've never painted any of them before. I've built a couple of them. I built a Merkava. I burnt the burnt. I burnt. I built this Panzer. Um, this paint has a slight odor to it. It's not like I'm like horrible, but it is slightly odorific. Um, and I then I built a zero. Um, in regards to scale models, and that's that's about it. But I've I've never painted any of them. And I asked my community what they would like to see me paint, and the Panzer won. So that is what I'm painting, which is good because I actually, that was kind of what I was leaning towards anyways. Give ourselves a little bit of dust and, like, dirt splatter up here. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and just spatter all over the bottom of this thing. We're not really going to see the bottom of it much, so I'm not super worried, but it's kind of a fun place to practice and, like, see how much I can build up with textures. The stuff is really nice. I really do like the, um, the AK splatter paint. I'm going to try using this on some of my bases in combination with my Citadel texture paints. I think that could be fun. splatter back here. Ah, okay. Hello, Dim! Welcome to the stream! Lovely to have you here. We are working on putting a little bit of dirt on my tank. If that wasn't obvious. <laughs> there would definitely be dirt on the underside of that. And then probably a little bit there. Leave some on these edges. Maybe a smidge. Just like dry it up there. Oh, oh, I just <laughs> I just stuck my hand on the bottom when it was still wet. Whoops. Oh my god, Dim, that's great. Congratulations on the possibility of your big boy job. <laughs> I did not. I did not see the chicken run that is making a return after 20 years. I do really like how much you can build this paint up.
think we've done this side at all with any dirt, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm really liking how the other side's looking. Oh, I've not heard of that one, actually. I'm familiar with a fair number of Panzer, or sorry, um, of Avalon Hill titles, but I've not played that one or heard of that one, actually. Well, I hope that you do get hired, and I hope that that lazy guy doesn't uh, screw you over in any way. I have a little bit of dirt on it, but that was not as much as I meant. Getting a little bit of splatter up there because of the wheels going around. I'm really starting to like how this is looking. I think we need to do some more work on the back here. Like, there should definitely be some splatter up there. Underneath that. side of that and that a little bit. This box a smidge. And then I'm gonna kind of get the dirt out of my brush a lot and I want to get a little bit of like just some dirt on the a little bit of areas on the sides and stuff. are looking pretty decent and dry. I actually wish I had gotten some more of these diorama things. Good evening, Plastic Alchemist. Welcome to the stream, sir. I need to do something else. So I'm gonna pull the powders back out. I'm gonna get a little bit more of my like, oil staining and go to town with that a smidge more on the top. Because while I don't want it to be like dirty dirty, I still feel like it needs a bit more weathering. And that'll give our dirt a little bit more time to dry.
Alright, I feel like that's a bit better. think I need to build up more dirt. What do you guys think? Do you think I should build up more dirt? Or add any more powders? around the rivets, like just in general. I'm gonna go in with more dirt. I'm also going to see, can I darken it a little bit. If I... If I add paint to the AK product, will it screw it up? Let's find out. Because I kind of want to see if I add a little bit of wild wood, which is just a really dark brown contrast paint. If I add that in, like a few drops of it, can I darken this at all? Come on, get off. There we go. Okay, and then we're just gonna mix it with this. Yeah, no, this is working. Sweet. We'll see how it dries. Because what I want to do is I want to go back in with this darker color and then dust everything again with the lighter tone as it dries. A good point. I could just test it on my like I'm, I'm going heavy because I want this like I'm actually thinking I want to do this heavier. So I want to see how that dries. Because I think it's going to work. It doesn't seem like it's drying or it's um separating from the paint or anything. That's exactly what I was thinking, two heads, is I want to layer the dirt. Because I like what I'm getting, but I feel like it's almost too light. And I want something a little darker, so I'm just, I'm going to go for it.
trying to work on a, a slightly natural spread of this. Because it is working, I think. I am getting a darker... Which is great. Sorry, I got too far over and I bumped the camera again. Thank you. I think it's looking pretty damn good too. I'm really happy about how the darker... Like, it's, it's very subtle. Actually, it's not. It's actually showing up on the camera better than I expected. You can see... Um, hold on, let me look. Let me, let me make it focus. So in the center here, you can definitely see where some of the darker brown bits are and where some of the lighter browns are. Like you can see it, you see the difference. So I'm hoping now when I go back in and do a little bit more with the lighter color, I can get a bit more of a gradient and it'll just, it'll pop better. Uh, I do need to mix more of my paint, however, so let's do that. That out. Let's get some more wild wood. And look at that, roughly the same consistency. Go us. Alright. Does it, do you have problems with the, like, the flower rotting over time, though? Because, like, that would be my, like, that's my one concern with putting, like, organic materials like that into my paints. Because I could definitely see the flower allowing for a greater thickness and a certain consistency added to your mud. And I like the idea of that, but, like, does it rot? I guess probably... Probably not. The paint probably seals it. 
But I'd love to know, like, if you've had, like, any experience with that. Or if you've had none, because then that would give me confidence in trying it. Okay, that's looking good on that side. Let's come over here to this side. No problems as of yet. I mean, I would assume that the chemicals would do it too, but like... I don't know, I always worry <laughs> when using like real organic materials like that. I can't remember what it was. Somebody I watched had, use it, had used um, like real like plants of some variety, like and didn't dry them like out properly. And so I think they ended up getting like bugs potentially. Maybe that's where, like, my fear of it comes from. why I like doing weathering is because I like just dabbing <laughs> at what I'm working on. Alright, did it actually end up drying? Okay, it is it is drying darker. It's it's still kind of subtle though. Maybe we should go darker. Fuck it, I'm adding black temp weathering. See what this does. Because it is drawing darker, it's just still lightens a lot. Kind of like having the buildup of just like various colors. So I'm okay with it. dry and then I might come back in with one more light pass just to see if I can get some variety. That's the plan everybody. That is the plan. sand I can completely understand. Like, that would be easy to deal with. For sure.
Okay, yeah, no, it definitely dried darker. Let's let it finish drying and then we'll do a bit more. But I'm, I'm feeling pretty happy with, with what we've done. I really like this section because I love how the mud dried there as, it, as if it got kicked up. Which was exactly what I was going for. It's looking great. I'm very happy. Don't know why I was so nervous about doing this in the first place. <laughs> I have a bit more of this paint left. I'm just gonna add it more places. Like, let's really... crazy on the bottom. We're going to come back in with some lighter tones too, so this should be fine. There we go. All right, we'll let it dry. Nice and muddy. Bruno, welcome to the stream, sir. Oh, no worries, Bruno. Don't worry. It's absolutely okay. Don't have to ever worry about being late. You know, now that we've got the mud on there, I think what I might do afterwards is we'll do, we can also additionally highlight it using the sand, light sand, and mud colors from Tamiya, which sounds awesome. So let's let this dry. We're going to do one more possible layer of this to lighten some areas back up, give us a bit more variety back in. Actually, can I start doing that on the sides now? I might be able to. Okay, I'm going to try... You know what, fuck it. I'm just gonna go straight into the sand. Why why waste my time playing around with the mud more when I can start dusting it? To start bringing out some lighter colors, huh? Alright, I wanna get the yellower tone. I just wanna see. Okay, honestly, it does actually add a very subtle highlight that I'm liking. I wonder if I were to rub it on, though. Do I have one of these that goes with the light? No. This dry brush is pretty much wrecked because I pushed it too far. Like, the bristles are super pushed in. So... Oh, no, I think that's a little bit too, too light, too light. All right, let's go into the mud then. Uh, I just realized I have zero paper towels. I didn't think I would need them. Right. Go into the mud.
Okay, I like it up top. I think I want to leave the darker stuff on the treads. But let's use it to dirty up some of these areas where they might just get more of a dusting. Rather than a full thing. I'm actually enjoying the effect that this has. Oh, shit. I'm touching the bottom. It's not dry yet. Good evening, Chris! Thank you, Chris. I will definitely have to check that out. I'm always looking for additional weathering tips. I feel like I'm almost done. A little bit of the highlighting work on here. Like, I'm feeling fairly close to done. Thank you, Sergeant Haunted. I am very happy with it, too. Like, I'm gonna put a little bit of dust on the underside. Here. Like, some dirts. Just because, like, maybe it got kicked up. Maybe with all of the firing, there's like some splatter and stuff that happened. But otherwise, I, I'm, I'm feeling like, do you guys have any suggestions for anything else I might do? Like, I'm feeling pretty satisfied. Ooh, I personally, I would go with the green and silver dim. That's my personal opinion. Um, mostly just because I, I think those colors, like I, I think silver goes a bit better with a cooler color tone than I think it goes with a warm color tone. So if you were going to do the gold, or if you were going to do the red, I would almost suggest gold instead. But then again, that also then looks more Blood Angel. So I'm very biased towards that. I, I am feeling very satisfied. I think I just want to emphasize maybe 
I'm going to use this dry brush and I'm going to get my gun metal out actually. Let me get some of this dust off. You don't have a paper towel? Just use your hand. Um, and I want to do the guns a bit more. There's that. There's that one. And there's this one back here. But like I'm I'm feeling satisfied. I don't think I have anything that I can simulate the fuel and oil stains with outside of my oil stain powder. And by on the engine deck, do you mean like right here? Like around, like is this section the engine deck? I thought it was, but I'm not 100% sure. I am okay. Look, this this actually does work really well for these oil. I kind of like the smudginess, though, of it. I think it adds a little bit more wear to it. It also kind of just ends up looking like dirt because it's very brown, so I'm going to go with it. I'm going to actually do a few... Maybe on the front a little bit, too. Oh, no, I don't think I'm going to go that far. I don't think I want to go quite that far with doing, like, a full stain like that. But I do like what I've added. I think I think this is where I'm going to... Okay, here's one thing that I might consider. I want to test. I like how the, some of the texture paint is still drying. I completely agree. It's a little, like, the it's a, the reflection. Here, hold on. Let me see if I... I'm 
How's that look? Is that a bit better? I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, I am going to pop off. I want to just talk to Chaos Cultist real quick, see what he thinks of it. See if there's anything else that we need to work on this, but I think we might actually be done with the tank. Um, the most that I really feel like I would want to do at this point is maybe add more grime. But I feel like we're pretty grimy already. Like, it is, it is looking pretty dusty, and I like that, so I'll be right back, everybody and we will uh, see if we need to do anything else. All right, he has suggested even more dirt. So I, and I kind of agree. So let's add in more dirt. But this time we're going to keep with the lighter stuff. The Merkava, I have not painted that one. Uh, it's over on a shelf, completely unpainted. Looking, uh, I mean, looking fine. <laughs> but without any texture or paint to it.
And I also see about if once the, the second layer of dirt has dried, going in and actually with some paint, uh, highlighting it. We're gonna let that dry a little bit. See if we can do a bit more work. I did not use an airbrush on the tank Justin Big Mac Sobak or Sobaka. Sobaka. Um, I used a regular brush. Well, actually, so first, and I'll have a video about this, the whole process on the tank this Friday. But first, I actually started by priming it with some Tamiya Color air um, rattle cans. German gray, then we did a wash, painted a few specific things, and then we started powdering the crap out of it. Um, and that's what we're that's where we're at right now. So we're going to let the dirt that we just applied dry a little bit, and then I'm gonna use this old dry brush that I have to one, emphasize some of the rust a bit more on this specifically, because I've I've muted it a smidge. And then I want to go back in and do a little bit of, um, a little bit of, uh, highlighting on my dirt to make it stand out a bit more. Um, and no problem stacking limit. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened with that. I checked the previous, like, list I pulled and I just don't, I don't know what happened. Patreon just didn't list you as an active person. So I apologize, but we got you fixed nowadays. Also, Holtz Transistor, welcome. As well as, and I, I am probably gonna butcher your username, friend. So I do apologize. But Uttred, uh, Bebenberg, uh, hello. I think <laughs> welcome to the stream. Okay, let's start seeing if we can highlight. Do I have any other... I just want to look and see if I have any other powders that might do a better job. Nope, that's just an orange rust still. We don't want to use that. Uh, you know, this gray actually might be interesting just on the, the 
like this section to add some highlights. Oh, I'm gonna try that. I need to get a paper towel real quick. I'm gonna grab one paper towel. I don't know why I didn't do this on some of my other breaks, but um, I didn't, so I'm gonna just do it now. <laughs> So here's my idea. Just found this gray, which I really like the look of. I'm gonna get all of the brown dust off of my brush. I wanna come in with this. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna test it on the bottom. Okay, that's a little pale. But. If I wasn't so heavy with it. Yes. Bring out some of my highlights again. Yes. Okay, I'm really liking that. Just need to do a little bit down here. Oh my god, that did wonders for this. Holy shit. I'm so pleased. I have raised my hand. I am a tank nerd. I mean I don't I'm a I'm a fresh tank nerd, but I'm still I'm learning. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go in now that we've found this blue tone. Oh my god, thank you, Tamiya for creating this because what I want to do is I want to hit the boxes to give them a bit more of a people have opened and closed these a lot I'm also going to hit the jerry tanks
Okay. All right, let's now get the blue off. I'm, I'm very happy with that. Ooh, hold on, wait, sorry. One more thing where I wanna do some blue. depth to the area. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm happy with that. No stacking limit. I'm also a tank nerd. Don't worry. I'm here with you. <laughs> BKM Slam. We are working on weathering my tank. Look, I've put I've put textures on it. We've put some powders on it. We're just emphasizing some of the powders that got a little bit diluted because of the other stuff that I was doing. So I have done. I want to. I want to do the. I'm gonna. We're gonna do a little bit of emphasis on the rust. Okay, we're gonna do a little emphasis on the rust and then after that we're gonna go in to emphasizing some of the dirt a bit more So I am really liking that. Let me get a focus. There we go. So I'm really liking that. What I want to do is I want to bring a little bit of the rust back out here. I lost a little bit of it with the dirt. Like, I don't want to bring too much of it back because obviously the dirt would cover it, but there's a couple things where I didn't emphasize the dirt as heavily and I just felt like I rubbed it off. There we go. Okay, that is back. It's a little bit subtle, but that's what I was hoping for. I'm just going to have a little bit more there. Kiss it away. Okay, cool. A little bit around there. Okay, dusting that. All right, now that we've gotten the rust taken care of. We're not gonna do any grass, but we're gonna do a little bit of this lighter yellow mixed in with some of the mud color tone. And now we're going to dab. Perfect.
And I'm literally treating this like it's dry brush. Oh, did my music end? Nope. Oh, the video is paused. Yes, I am still listening. Thank you. Okay, yeah, no, I think having a little bit of that lighter color tone mixed in is exactly what I was needing. Because I'm now getting a bit more of a pop. go happy with how this is turning out okay there we go you battles with dice and mice <laughs> your username is great um, I am really happy with it I'm actually quite pleased Okay. I think... I think I'm pretty darn happy with it. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go see what Chaos Cultist says one more time, and then uh, after that we might go ahead and end the stream. I'll be right back, everybody. I just realized I was starting to explain to you that I'm gonna leave you here on this screen with the music playing and everything because I'll be gone for like maybe a minute less than that. Uh, but then I realized that I had muted myself when I was explaining that because I'm 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 smart. I'm a smart lady sometimes. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll be right back.
All right, this, I am not going to be adding any decals, Bob. We are not gonna be doing decals this time. I thought about maybe like hand drawing on the German cross, but I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> so we're not gonna do it this time. Um, I think what might end up happening is detail decals are, or at least doing some artwork or freehand on it to do the iconography is what I'm going to focus on next time. This was predominantly about, can I get this thing painted? Can I make it look good? And like, make it look like it's actually a scale model tank that has been weathered. And I'm very happy with how this looks. I'm very satisfied. And I'm worried that if I keep going, I'm going to just push it too far. And I'm worried it's going to just, I'm going to overdo it a little bit. But I'm really happy that we found that blue powder from Tamiya. I think that really helped me emphasize the turret area and everything. That looks really good now, I feel. And then I also really like what we did with that lighter sand color tone to help highlight some of the dirt that we did. Because as much as I do, I really like this stuff. I really like the AK splatter effects dirt for dioramas. This is not sponsored or anything. I'm just saying that as a first time user of this product, I enjoy it. My one criticism of it is it dries incredibly flat. So if you're going to use this, you definitely either want to layer it with different types of the same product, but like just different colors. Because I, I did a little bit of mixing earlier in the stream, but I don't think it really affected it that much. I think I might have needed to put like real acrylic paint into it instead of just contrast colors, but I was trying to darken it subtly. And it was maybe a little too subtle, but I do really like this stuff regardless. No, Malcolm, I'm not gonna do a mini diorama at this point. I think, I don't know what my ultimate long-term plan for my, my scale models are. I have a bunch that I've been working on. This is the first that I've painted up. I have the Merkava that I can paint up and I have a Sherman that I recently bought, the Easy 8 and I'm gonna build that next and I wanna paint that as well. And that might be where I actually start doing like the decal work, like I said. But, um, I really, really enjoyed, like, I'm really enjoying this hobby, like, this particular element of the hobby, and so maybe, maybe dioramas will be in my future when it comes to this. That would be very cool, because I've never done anything like that, but not for this time around. Also, I want to thank Matej Obak, I hope I said that correctly, for subscribing. Thank you very much for being here. Hope you enjoy your time. All right, I think that's going to be it for us. We're going to go ahead and sign off today. I very much enjoyed this. You guys can be expecting a video talking about the entire process. You'll see footage from the stream, I am sure, in that video. And that will be coming out hopefully this Friday. That is my plan. So fingers crossed that's when it comes out. Um, it should, it, so far, I'm like, now that the tank is done, I just need to talk about it and everything. So that shouldn't be too hard. And I'm really really excited for this video and just also for how how my tank turned out like it just i like it i really really am pleased with it i like it a lot okay i've rambled enough see you guys later oh yeah no i'm gonna i absolutely <laughs> they get stuck mud because it gets places where it'll get trapped that's fair we'll have to see when we build that but yeah i'm really happy with this and I think I did a good job with it. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> you let me know down in the comments whether or not you thought I've done a good job with this. And you better watch the tank video that comes out that is all about it. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day. A very good evening and an extra lovely hobby night. See ya. Thank you.